Good, happy Monday morning. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Today is December 16, 2019. We have a lot of news to get to this Monday morning, so let's begin. First up, East Kingston Fire Department respond to drier fire. More crews called in because of the strong winds. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Landowners, it's time for special year-end savings from Mahindra, the world's number one selling farm trip. Concerns over tonight's gusting winds, forcing fire crews in East Kingston to call in some more crews tonight. Firefighters were called to Carroll Blaine for a drier fire shortly after 5 o'clock. When they got on that scene, flames and smoke were seen coming from the basement. The chief says due to some great teamwork, they were able to keep those flames from spreading beyond the basement. They say the weather conditions were cause for concern at first. Yeah, that's why we initially went to a, a full first alarm. When we first got on scene, saw heavy fire and smoke upon arrival. We called for the full first alarm, knowing that we have wind conditions and um, we have both water from our own dry hydrants. The homeowner, her daughter, and a cat managed to escape. One firefighter was taken to the hospital with smoke inhalation and has since been released. That home is not livable right now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Stratham's Light for Lives raise money for 10-year-old with psychic fibrosis. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Mike Cronin. Landowners, it's time for special year-end savings from Mahindra, the world's number one selling farm tractor. Enjoys... <laughs> that smile says it all. Ten-year-old Liam Sweeney has a long battle ahead of him, but this is a celebration. A celebration of his life, and the whole town of Stratum is behind him. Really fun seeing all the houses lit up, and we raising awareness, which is really amazing on how much people actually appreciate uh, this. Liam was born with cystic fibrosis, a progressive disease that damages the lungs and digestive system. Lights for Lives is a fundraiser that each year supports a family in need through a Christmas lights contest. Last night, Liam and his family got to enjoy all 15 homes that competed. We were riding around the fire truck and getting out, and there's, you know, hundreds, hundred people, hundred plus people at houses. Literally, our town is lit up with happiness for Liam and his family. It's just amazing. It was so fun to see all the homes and decorations and just the spirit. Lights for Lives is in its sixth year, partnering with the Stratum Fire Department, where today there was food, raffles, and the winner of the lights contest was revealed. It's really grown and the houses are amazing. The community spirit is amazing. That's really, for me, the most fun part is the community spirit. And around the holidays, that's what it's all about, making life a little easier for those who clearly deserve it. When you see the support, you see all these people showing up here today, how does that make you feel? Um, excited and um, just hopeful to find a cure uh, for staff. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. With winter weather approaching, fish and game remind hikers to be prepared. 
Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. Landowners, it's time for special year-end savings from Mahindra, the world's number one selling... Experienced hikers make their way down a windy Mount Monadnock. I didn't get blown off, but we had to kind of hunker down. Um, it was definitely... Um, I kind of, a few times I thought I was going to lose my hat. I think conditions were pretty, pretty rough up top, but, you know, on the trail up it wasn't so bad. A few icy spots, but... Yeah, I think we were a little overprepared this time. Both groups had more than they needed, but it didn't bother them. We have our full uh, kits on that we're going to be using for the Mount Washington trip, so we might be a little overdressed for it, but at the same time, I needed everything when I was up top. According to Fish and Game, an unprepared hiker encountered difficulties on White Dog Trail on Saturday. The poor weather and the darkness coming in, he had to stay a little bit longer than he thought. The man called 911, knowing he would need assistance. Fish and Game responded and walked him down the mountain and are now urging people to visit hikesafe.com before hitting the trails. How to plan ahead, look at the weather, anticipate the hike. Um, all that is very important stuff, you know, when you're going out hiking in New Hampshire. Mount Monadnock is one of the state's most popular hiking destinations with winter weather expected this week. Fish and Game still expect a lot of hikers to hit these trails. On any given day of the year, we could find people out there. Hikers say even on rough days, they notice people showing up without the proper gear. We just saw some boots with fur on them. That's probably not the best footwear to have there and uh, jeans. <laughs> That's not the best thing to be hiking in at this this time of year, for sure. In Jaffrey, Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Very important to be prepared this season for hiking. Pappas says... He will vote for both articles of impeachment against President Trump. Freshman Democrat joins Custer in support, says decision came down to facts, the Constitution, and my continuance. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Attention to detail. That's what sets Kubota construction equipment apart. It's how we maximize. We have breaking news tonight. Congressman Chris Pappas says he will support both articles of impeachment when they come to the House floor for a vote. Voters in Pappas' district voted for President Trump in 2016. In a statement, Pappas says, quote, what the president has done is blatantly wrong, and I will not stand idly by when a president compromises the rule of law and our national security for his own personal political benefit. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Police warn package thefts are on rise. Local police departments join force find similarities. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Tim Callery. Someone gets a job that wouldn't have had it otherwise. Someone gets a house that wouldn't have had it otherwise. Some family has a place to take their children for preschool that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Our donors like that they help people help themselves. Well, police in multiple towns sending out a warning following a spike in package thefts. Officials say they usually see a rise in these crimes this time of year. WMUR's Tim Callery live in Bedford, where police are working with other departments Hoping to try to catch these people responsible, Tim. Well, Sharice, that's right. You know, right now there are a lot of packages that are being delivered, and most are pretty light. 
and easy to grab. And a lot of people are taking advantage of that. A package thief was recently caught on camera here in Bedford, and police say he may be linked to other thefts in surrounding towns. Tis the season when delivery trucks start flooding local neighborhoods, bringing those must-have items on your wish list to your front door. But be careful, there are some people out there hoping to swipe what's inside. A few days ago, we took a report of a package theft off of someone's front door. And now Bedford police are trying to track down this person, caught on camera helping themselves to someone else's items. Younger male came right up to the door, took the package shortly after it was delivered. That person then jumps into a waiting SUV before taking off. We have video from the doorbell camera, uh, pretty clear. Looks like a late model silver Toyota 4Runner. And this may not have been their only stop. We've received some information recently that might be involved in surrounding towns just based upon the uh, doorbell video footage that was posted on our social media account today. Someone fitting the same description was spotted on surveillance darting up a Dunbar in driveway. <laughs> You can see them grab a package and run back to an SUV similar to the one seen in the Bedford theft. We're communicating with them to see if there's any information that can be shared at this point. In the meantime, police are reminding residents if you're expecting a package, come up with a plan so you don't end up losing your purchase. Time of opportunity literally takes under a minute. So you're just trying to ask people be vigilant. If you know you're expecting something, make arrangements for someone to be there have it delivered to another site, place of employment, neighbor, friend, anything like that. All right, so if anything stuck out to you in those images or if you have any information on who that person may be, you are asked to contact the Bedford Police Department. Reporting live in Bedford, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report in U.S. features point to a higher open on Wall Street. U.S. stock index features pointed to a cautiously higher open Monday morning. Military investigating possible white powder hand gesture flashed by cadets. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. A troubling investigation underway at two of America's most prestigious military academies. Several cadets and midshipmen seen on live TV at the Army-Navy football game, possibly flashing hand symbols, sometimes associated with white supremacists. Here's ABC's Trevor Alt. Tonight, the West Point Military Academy launching an investigation after cadets at Saturday's Army-Navy football game in Philadelphia flashed this hand gesture, sometimes associated with hate groups. Watch closely. You ask anybody that's ever had to deal with a cadet. While an ESPN broadcaster reports during a pregame live shot, at least four cadets put up the symbol. One of them even sliding into the camera shot to make his hand gesture and face visible. Another making the gesture directly behind a minority cadet. Tonight, the U.S. Naval Academy saying, based on findings of the investigation, those involved will be held appropriately accountable. It would be inappropriate to speculate any further while we are conducting this investigation. The hand gesture looks like the OK sign. While the symbol can have other innocent meanings, it's been adopted by the white nationalist community after the Christchurch mosque shootings in New Zealand earlier this year, when according to the Anti-Defamation League, it began to signify white power. We should never make assumptions about why people are using it. It has um, gone to a much darker and um, I think more dangerous place. The names of these cadets have still not been released and none of them have commented so far, meaning right now the intention behind these gestures is still not clear. Tom, the investigation underway. All right, Trevor, thank you. Hi. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for that this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast. Right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all enjoyed watching and also back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.